Today, we're speaking with Natalie Pace, author of Power of 8 Billion, It's Up to Us, co-creator of the Earth Gratitude Project. The truth will set you free. And then gratitude is so important because when we're grateful for something, we treat it differently. Like if you're grateful for your sacred beloved partner, you honor them, you want them to, you want to show them how much you care. And if we now put the health of our planet on top, rather than the anxiety that we're not helping, yeah. put the health of the planet on top, all of our decisions can change. Today, we're speaking with Natalie Pace, author of Power of 8 Billion, It's Up to Us, co-creator of the Earth Gratitude Project. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Global Badass Goddess, where we aim to empower and inspire. Natalie Pace is best-selling author of The Gratitude Game, The ABCs of Money, and Put Your Money Where Your Heart Is. She's a blogger on Medium, Blog Talk Radio, Huffington Post, and again, creator of Earth Gratitude Project. I'm so delighted to have her here today. One thing though, on Earth Day, April 22nd, you can see her work. It'll be at Earth Gratitude Festival. We invite you to join us to simply power up the gratitude and power down the grid. So let's get as close to personal net zero as you can for at least one hour. That's the game we're playing. Let's break some old habits and try some new ones. This can change your life and make us the generation that supports our planet. Some of the uh, contributors to Earth Gratitude is the Dalai Lama, the heir to the throne of Great Britain, Elon Musk, the Duchess of Northumberland, Ariana Huffington, Deepak Chopra, Kathleen Rogers, who is the president of Earth Day Network, Lynn Twist, one of my favorites, and much more. So we'll be live streaming on the 22nd and the 23rd from 8 a.m. to 8, 10 p.m. Excuse, excuse me, 10 a.m. Yeah, we're going to go all day. Um, <laughs> also, the Power of 8 Billion book from um, we'll, I guess it will be on an ebook. And if you sign up, you'll get a download link for free. So I'm excited about that. I hope to see you guys there. Let's join them and really support these projects that make a difference. So welcome, Natalie. <laughs> Thank you so much for that introduction. And even though the live stream is only 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., it is truly, it's a site, you know, it's online, it's global. So we have people tuning in from Dubai and from, you know, uh, Europe, all over the continents. We even found someone that came in uh, yesterday from Africa. She's Queen Diambi of the Democratic wow. Republic of Congo. Yeah, so it's truly global. We're excited. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that at 10 p.m. Yeah, we're going to go all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 8 a.m. Uh, 8 to 10 a.m. So that's exciting. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, so just, you know, just to jump in, I'd love to um, know why our intention and gratitude and action is so important now. I wish you would just speak to that. Yeah, so I mean, I, I hear this so much and it's really heartbreaking, especially when a younger person has so much climate anxiety. Sometimes they're even suicidal and it's just heartbreaking to me because we do have the power to heal our planet. And, you know, the, the change has always come from the people. And that's why I wrote The Power of 8 Billion. It's up to us because not only do we need the real facts, which are often just not out there. A lot of people just yeah. don't have the basics, you know, right. um, as one example, there are only 20 fossil fuel companies, mainly oil, gas and coal. 20 companies are responsible for over one third of the carbon emissions in the atmosphere. So there's a lot of noise that kind of tries to get around that fact. And that fact is very seldom out there, but we're the ones that put gas in our car. We're yeah. the ones that turn on the lights. And a lot of that is powered by fossil fuels, more or less, depending on where you're at. So again, the truth will set you free. And then gratitude is so important because when we're grateful for something, 
we treat it differently. Like if you're grateful for your sacred beloved partner, you honor them, you want them to, you wanna show them how much you care. And if we now put the health of our planet on top, rather than the anxiety that we're not yeah. helping, put the health of the planet on top, all of our decisions can change. I'll give you one example if you'll humor me for yes, a moment. Absolutely. Okay. I have a pretty low carbon footprint and I'm very mindful about it and I care a lot. But this year I was like, okay, every decision, the planet gets number one priority. So, mm. you know, we're, a we're able to start having our, I do online retreats for financial literacy, sustainability. Um, but before that we did them in person, right? Before the pandemic, we're able to start going back to in person. And a lot of people were like, let's do that. And then I was like, oh, I promise to put the planet as the top priority. I can save 100 air airplane flights at minimum per year if I keep it online. So I just said, we're keeping it online. Yes, there's a reason to have a brain trust meeting for people that really you know, become part of the brain trust, but for beginners, it's actually a better experience to do it yeah. online. Yeah, and until we really find, until we really get that shift, you know, I think yeah. it's important to to do local, to do sustainable local, you know, that type of thing. So to meet in person, maybe have some other options like walking or use, you know, electric or whatever you can, you know. Um, I think that until we get to that place, which I think we're heading towards, it feels like it, you can start to see it, the pressure that's that's being put on with the oil and gas. Um then we sh then we can be more active to be out there and traveling and that type of thing, like seriously traveling. But I, I'm with well, you with the carbon footprint. There was never that much. Well, I have to fly here. You know, yeah. I, I can't talk to people, but now you can. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, technology has helped out a lot. Zoom has gotten a lot better than it was a decade ago. But I want to I want to give you guys another piece of hope. First of all, I think my personal commitment, I challenge all of you and all the global badasses out there that we can do this year a reduction in our CO2 footprint of 30%. It's yeah. not hard, it's smarter choices. It's not necessarily a huge change in lifestyle. It yeah. might be a little bit, like I'm gonna have to take the train when I go back to Santa Monica this time I'm up near San Francisco. Okay. Um, and I'm happy to do that. A little more time, better for the planet. But um, you can save literally thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars with smarter energy choices. Yeah. The average person spends $7,500 a year on a car. So if you are able to shift that out, even if like a lot of people will shift it out and choose more walking and biking and yeah. then to, um, you know, mass transit. And if those options aren't there for you, um, you can also do ride share, Uber, that sort of thing. I do not, I gave up my car a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and um, that money goes for uh, things I love a lot more than Chevron, Exxon Mobil and yeah. Um, car companies. Yeah. Yeah. We, it's funny that you said that because we just did, we had three cars for three people here in our house and you know, we gave up two of them. And so now we just share and it's, it's, it's actually, and of course mine's eco-friendly. Um, so you know, it's, it's a hybrid. So it's a lot, a lot better, you know, it's really helped. So, and plus we work at home. So that, that really helps too. But, um, you know, you, we were saying like you, you travel the world in the past, you know, um, and you did a lot of researching for sustainability. What are some of the stories that like really inspired you around that? You know, and I'm, this is a plug for earthgratitude.org, right? Because that's what's going to happen on Earth Day on April 22nd, April 23rd is you're going to meet a lot of the people that I have met and brought in, you know, me and my partners, um, Christopher Van Buren and, and William Gladstone. So um, there's a school. It, this is so, I, I just love this story. Four-year-olds to nine-year-olds, they get rid of all the plastic in their school and they decide that's mm. not enough. They're going to go out into their city and sign up all the you know businesses and say, you guys need to get rid of plastic too. Um, I know. And so they become like one of the most powerful green lobby in all of England. Some of them have spoken at parliament. They won many, many eco awards, including Roots and Shoots. That's Jane Goodall's uh, Roots and Shoots yeah. organization. Um, here in the U.S., you know, you have kids that are uh, you know, able to use Alice Waters recipes from uh, her edible schoolyard. I asked one of the kids, it's a 10 year old, what's your favorite food? And she said, kale pesto. 
And I was like, oh my God, this <laughs> wow. is, you know, all you have to do is expose kids to fresh, great yes. produce and yes. their whole palate changes. You absolutely. Know? Absolutely. And you can feel it in your body. You just kind of go, nom, nom, yeah. oh, that feels good. You know, it may yes. not look enticing to the eye, but <laughs> that shifts. Well, you know? a good, a good chef will actually make it so that you can Both. eat with your eyes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. But, well, but there are many, many, many stories. Um, you know, we, we just yesterday interviewed the Queen Diambi of the Congo, and she talks about, you look, the, the Africa is suffering the most from climate mm -hmm. change, and they mm -hmm. have the lowest carbon footprint. So again, some of these, some of this information is important because there's a lot of rhetoric that spin things and, and makes us not realize, look, if you live in the US, if you live in Australia, Canada, the Middle East, our carbon footprint is the highest in the world. Europeans, much lower. Africa, yeah. a rounding error of yeah. ours. Yeah. So it really is up to us. We really can do this. And what I can say personally is that, um, you know, not only do you save thousands, you get better health, you certainly feel better because you're yeah. part of the solution. It, it exit climate anxiety, enter gratitude for the home planet, and yes. it becomes the natural thing, not something you forced, you know, yeah. it just is the way it is. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, kind of going back to gratitude, when you're talking about gratitude, you know, I've made a practice of the morning when I wake up, like the first thing I think about is oh, what am I grateful for? And what am I doing about that gratefulness? Because sometimes it's good because it, it yeah. uplifts your own internal self, but it's yeah. also good to like get it on somebody. Like yesterday I, I texted a whole bunch of people, but I, I wrote a really heartfelt note that I was, you know, really grateful for them and how they touched my life and that, that we're glad they're here. And I had so many people respond going, I needed to hear that. So uh -huh. if you remember that, that somebody that you may know, just reach out to them and say, Hey, you know, I'm here or you're okay, or you're amazing. And then they'll just go, oh my God, I was just having a really bad day or a bad mind moment, you know? So yeah. the challenge bus was here, you know? So <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah, so grateful. And I'm really glad that you, you, you've really led the way with that, you know, climate action and being grateful and, and showing us how the, how all of that mixes in, you know, what are some of the things that, that I know we kind of talked about a few things, but what are some of the things that you would recommend that could help heal the planet and ourselves actually? Yeah. So I think there's really five things that can be really great for us, right? Uh, first is drive less. The second thing would be buy less. Like a lot of times we hear, oh, China has this mass and they are the number one CO2 emitter, but per capita, per person, much lower than the US. And when you think that they're the factory to the world and they're actually making our stuff there, yes. then our fingerprints are on that CO2 footprint too. Plus yeah. then shipping it all the way back. So drive less, buy less. There's no excuse for single use. So we have to stop using and tossing. I see, you know, yeah. a lot of people, especially the younger generation, still they have all this, you know, want to help the planet. And I still see them going to Starbucks or, you know, some other place, drinking and tossing, like we just have to yeah. end that now. Absolutely. Um, also, also, again, you can save thousands with smarter energy choices. And if you want to know this and more with all the data behind it, um, please do go to nataliepace.com and download the book. It's gonna be uh, free on Earth Day. Perfect. And um, the last thing I'll say is eat local and organic. Yes. That's really key as well. Yes, and we could talk for hours about that and why. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, it, and I, I think Natalie, what you're really saying is, you know, please take a moment just yeah. to sit and think, like great example with Starbucks, keep your cup with you if you need to go get a coffee, you know, and be, just be mindful, you know, be intentional, yeah. be mindful, whatever you're doing and, and try to help break yourself the habits. And when you're falling, when you see yourself falling into 
uh, like a depressed state or feel, you know, reach out to somebody, you know, um, uh, look something up online. Um, another wonderful company is Foundation for Climate Restoration. Uh, Peter Fikowski, his, his uh, nonprofit is amazing. They're already doing carbon capture. And, you know, I mean, we could talk about a lot of different companies, but, you know, and I'm just so excited that that you're a part of this too and, and really helping support us to understand what's next. Um, so when you wrote The Power of Eight Billion, I just love that. Yeah. I love Thank that. You. Oh gosh, it's up to us, right? It's like, yeah, bingo. Um, you know, there's so many books out there right now and people get overwhelmed with that, um, you know, climate change and this and that. So why did you write the book? Well, I felt that people didn't have the right answers. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of books out there and a lot of them are really powerful and they might have a piece of it. And I thought you just need a handbook that says, yeah. look, here's where all the CO2 comes from. Here's the truth about it. And um, here's what you can do about it. And so each chapter is just broken down like that. It's only 250 pages. And I just felt like I knew a lot of people that had a good heart and a big CO2 footprint, and they weren't making the connections, largely because the information isn't that easy to find about everything. Yes. There's a lot of misinformation that leads you down the wrong path. You know, yeah. um, I know some people think that a car for a cow uh, emits more than the fossil fuel companies that are responsible for over one third of the CO2. So again, you get caught up in these debates, especially if you're in a, a vertical silo on social media. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate to have people on both sides of the aisle that read my work because it's financial literacy and sustainability too. Um, and, you know, that's a bipartisan issue. Everybody wants clean air, clean water, clean food that's healthy and good for you. We all want that. The thing that gets us tripped up are a lot of the misinformation yeah. and also not, you know, powerless to know what to do because of the yes. amount of misinformation. Yes. So that was it. And I had, you know, 20 years of researching the topic. So, um, you know, my, the things that I'm presenting here are not my ideas. These are the ideas of the leading experts. And I felt that was important to put into, you know, an easy format for us to understand. Yeah. Thank you for that. I really, really appreciate that. I look forward to sharing this more. Um, you know, it, you mentioned something earlier about Africa and how they had the lowest carbon footprint. And, you know, they have the most arid desert, <laughs> you know, strip right across the Nigeria, you know. And they're doing some amazing um, uh, regeneration in that, that area. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but, um, you know, th and there are interesting things like, um, and I can't remember the guy's name, but I think he started back in the fifties. You might know who I'm talking about or 20, something like 30, I don't know, right around there. But um, he was, he went in and took an arid land that had just been completely demolished brought in animals, cows and sheep and different things, and had this wonderful um, cyclical cycle of eat, go to the bathroom, you know, it grows, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, it, and it was amazing because it really kind of kiboshed some misinformation around carbon and, you know, cows, you know, or, or, you know, it's like, hmm, interesting. Well, perhaps the most uh, famous person would be Wangari Maathai, who won the Nobel Prize, right? Okay. For right. the Green Belt Movement. So, okay, you know, that's her, him. her, that's a her. woman. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Wangari Maathai. So the Green Belt Movement, what, what actually had happened was that Kenya was suffering as, as is happening right now in the Amazon. And by the way, that's another thing we mm. have to do is use recycled toilet paper. So a lot of trees get chopped down just for our everyday needs, pa toilet paper, paper towels, drink and toss uh, paper stuff. And anyway, so a lot of the forests were being raised in Kenya. Wangari Maathai started the Green Belt Movement and all they did, because then you don't, you have less water, you have less crops, all of yeah. this. So she started the Green Belt Movement. They replanted trees and, you know, it basically brought, it brings back um, economy too, right? Okay, because yeah, yeah. when people have to walk all day for water, what else can they do throughout that day, right? And they don't right. have enough water to make their own crops. They're reliant on somebody else to sell them food. So um, yeah, there's incredible examples of good yeah. stuff going on for yeah. sure. And, and which says 
get online, <laughs> just ask a question, you know, like what's happening. I'm, I'm starting to do that more myself. Um, yeah. I also donate to One Tree Planted, you know, and you can pick the areas like it's a dollar a tree, you know, that type of thing. There's something that all of us can do that maybe we're passionate about or that we're interested in. We may not have time to be able to go physically do something, but we can either donate with our money, vote with our pocketbook, if you know what I mean, um, that yeah. type of thing. And, and understand the, the power of us as a customer, right? Like yes. uh, some of us can can donate to plant a tree and others can say, I won't, I won't use a tree to flush it down the toilet. That's as powerful too, right? Yes. So understand that time and talent and brain power are as important as money, right? Yeah. They're like in that global gratitude consciousness, yes. those things are currency too. So is when you step out as a consumer and vote with your dollars, I'm not gonna buy that. I'm going to, you know, because of this, yeah. all, everything changes. So I just say that's the whole thing. Look, the Earth Gratitude Project is us going around the planet and featuring people that are truly doing good work. And most of them, I would say 85%, I have visited personally because I wanna make sure that these are really concepts that work, right? Yeah, yeah, Sometimes yeah. there'll be a good concept drawing or it might be an organization that was just started last year. So these are people who've been doing it for decades, decades. who are the experts, you know? Gotcha. And um, anyway, so it's not that daunting. I know it, sometimes it feels like, oh, great. I'm gonna have another thing to learn. But the truth is, if you can save thousands, if you can heal the planet and all you have to do is read a 250 page book or a, you know, and join us for an earth gratitude celebration and all that you learn, and then it becomes the way life is. Yes. You know, you're just walking yes. in gratitude. You're walking in healing the planet. You, you know, wow, what an empowering feeling that is, right? Yeah. And that we don't have to be victims to whatever a company has presented to us. You know, like I remember, um, this sounds kind of weird, but talking about the, the toilet paper scenario, you know, my grandmother came from that, that 19, 1913 on up and they, she used a washcloth. So, wow. so that wasn't, it was right by the, you know, on the tub. And I thought, what is that? And, I mean, she had toilet yeah. paper for, you know, but I just thought that was, wow, that's environmentally conscious. You just wipe yeah. and wash, wipe and wash it out, you know? Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's really <laughs> environmental, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, you know, there's so many things out there that if we just get curious enough, just be curious, ask the question. We have the power of, you know, the internet, and um and our own brains so to you know there's no excuse to lose <laughs> yeah and yeah. there's every there's every benefit to empower ourselves i mean look i i think it's i'm i'm less a fan of just going online because i think that it's really easy particularly mm. with the way that's that true. ai is programmed that's true that, mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's really hard sometimes to find the truth there's a lot of information that's misinformation again yeah i'm not just trying to sell a book i price look i'm giving it away for free on earth day i price yeah. the ebook as low as amazon would help would allow us to um the point is you really need the information yeah, and correct right mm -hmm. you got to get right action to do it so again it's not that i only want you to buy my book it's that I have spent 20 years that you don't have yeah. to research this. And that's, that's right. why I wrote the book. And that's it right. does make it easy for you. And hopefully, you know, because we're talking about people, like, it's like, okay, here's the statistic. Now guess, this is what Jane in, um, you know, here did. And here's what Alvin and Tam and his family did. Yeah. And here's what the city of Poundbury did. And here's what yeah. these four to nine year olds at Damer's first school did, you know? And yeah. you can get so inspired by everyday people, not just making changes for themselves that completely empower them yeah um but and save them both loads of money that you can spend for things you like a lot more but also um you know it's giving you living facts rather than you know data that that kind of dries up and falls right. on the page or that could you be know? skewed like you said um wow um okay so april 22nd and 23rd right 
8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Earth gratitude. Yep. And and then you will get, be able to get to hear the Dalai Lama speak. Isn't that correct? And a variety yes. of people. Okay. That's I'll very see exciting. Ya. Sia donated her uh, wonderful song, Miracle. So nice. I don't want to stop before the miracle. And we have a great visionary uh, filmmaker who does Cirque du Soleil and all that. He he reimagined it. We have Eco Living Tips from Ed Bagley Jr., Queen Diambi. We have a lot of great people from her. the Damer's First School, those four to nine-year-olds that I've been bragging about. That's awesome. That's perfect. So, okay, good. Yeah. Well, everyone, it'll be it'll be down. You'll see it. They'll all be all the links will be there, and you can just click on the links and go sign up and get the book and watch the amazing um, celebration. So, well, to just kind of wrap it up, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. Oh, and great! This is going to be fun. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. <laughs> so you ready? Hold tight. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. What's the most adventurous thing you've done? Ooh, I think my whole life is an adventure, honestly. <laughs> Um, as an example, and, and this one ties into even a little bit of carbon footprint. So um, I usually go to Europe at least once a year. And I was in Italy because in Rome because my girlfriend has a place there. And um, a friend of mine was going to take his yacht to Tunisia. That means he has to, he was coming from France down to Tunisia and back, right? right? So I met him in Sardinia and Corsica um, just so that I could have that experience. Now, what did I learn from that? Um, I won't ever go on a yacht or a cruise again because I I did put it together and, uh, and how much oil and gas is being used. Mm. So I will never do that again. I I would I justified it when I was doing it, and this was just last August, um, because I said he's doing it anyway, so I'm not increasing the carbon footprint, mm. and I want to know what the fascination is with yachts rather than sailboats. Right. So um, anyway, so but any my my whole life tends to be that kind of adventure because once you say. I research green product um, projects. Everybody wants you to come and research their green projects. So yeah, it takes me a, a lot of places. Okay, interesting. All right, guilty pleasure. Oh, um, you mean other than chocolate and coffee? <laughs> I would... <laughs> Those are pretty lovely. <laughs> Best piece of advice you ever got. Oh, um, Actually, I, it was, uh, I've always thought that you should follow your heart, but I've come to appreciate your brain too. I think that they make a very good combination. Like I, what I would say is this, is that actually with my brain, I believe a lot in meditation mm -hmm. in order to open up your brain to divine wisdom. Yes. Um, and I think that if you use that, if you try to plug your brain into divine wisdom, that then your heart is kind mm -hmm. of like the, mm -hmm. the place where everything resonates from. Mm -hmm. So um, I got into a lot of trouble as a youngster, just following my heart without <laughs> adding in divine wisdom. <laughs> and so I don't know that anybody told me that trick, but hopefully as, a, as an elderly, as an elder now, I can pass that one along. I love it. Okay, one last one. If I could, I... Ooh. Um, I would buy a house in Poundbury and that's the most sustainable place on the planet. And I oh, absolutely wow. adore it. Yeah. Wow. Is that, that's in the UK, right? Yeah. It's in, yeah. Uh, it's where Damer's first school is. And the reason I say it, it that I would is that there's all kinds of, you know, issues from, you know, people living in the U S buying there. It's not insurmountable, but it does add a little bit of extra cost. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you, Natalie. I really appreciate you as a beautiful woman and human being and a badass goddess. <laughs> ah, thank, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you in. for thank you for being with us. And um, please go to nataliepace.com. You can also go to earthgratitude.org and her book will be available at the Earth Gratitude uh, the festival. So show up, see you there, and let's play the game together. All right. Oh,